Carl Malone, the mailman, the second highest scorer in NBA history, the best power forward of all time, the dream team alumnus, the father to a WNBA champion, the deadbeat dad to a kid whose mommy impregnated when he was 20 and she was 13, the NRA board member, the legend without a championship ring. Carl Malone has a long Wikipedia page and several articles about his storied and checkered past that are definitely worth a Google. I'm not here to delve into that, though. I'm here to talk about something far more personally important. Monster Trucks. I love Monster Trucks. Growing up, Monster Jam was the thing. I'd watch every event on TV. I'd play with my Hot Wheels diecasts, I'd go to rallies at Nassau Coliseum. I couldn't get enough. People are always surprised when I tell them this because I'm not really into motorsports, NASCAR and whatnot, but... Come on, it's Monster Jam! It's giant trucks jumping over stuff and crushing cars and spinning around and doing flips and being awesome! How can you not love it? I bring this up because for three years, Carl Malone had his own monster truck. Power forward on the Monster Jam circuit from 2002 to 2005. Monster Jam was known for getting sponsorships and such from individuals, especially with WCW wrestlers like Bill Goldberg, Sting, Medusa, even Hollywood Hulk Hogan. But they had never gotten a blessing like this from an athlete from the four major sports. Worlds were colliding. This is the story of Carl Malone and the Power Forward Machine. First, let's address how absolutely bonkers it is to have your own monster truck. You've made over $100 million over the course of one incredible NBA career. What do you do to pass the time? What do you spend your money on? Certainly not child support. hey -o! The partnership between Monster Jam and World Championship Wrestling made a whole lot of sense, really. Even though races and freestyles weren't scripted, there were no storylines, and most of the drivers were pasty white southern guys who looked like they were either coming from a NASCAR pit crew or an IBM conference, Monster Jam was all about showmanship. It was high-flying, testosterone-pumping, crowd-exciting fun. There were plenty of personalities in the sport. You had Dennis Anderson, the wily old veteran who kinda looked like Goose Gossage's Virginian cousin. Tom Mentz, the cocky rival of Anderson who won everything. Basically the Yankees of Monster Jam. Then you had Jim Kohler, aka Mr. Excitement, Alan and Dave Pizzo, drivers of the sexiest looking cars ever while themselves being the least sexy men ever born, Brian Bartle, aka knockoff James Hetfield. Throw in a couple wrestlers in? Yeah, makes sense. With some of the personalities they were trotting out, I'm amazed they even needed wrestlers, but they fit in pretty seamlessly. I feel sorry for that poor guy that owns that motorhome, because it is gone! I wasn't going to leave it for Tom! I wasn't going to leave it for Dennis. I took it out. It is gone. Yeah. Yep. It makes me wonder what other wrestlers could have had a truck. Like, imagine if Mr. T had a monster truck, complete with gold chains and a mohawk. I call it the team machine. Or if you're going to have NWO, why not have a Diamond Dallas Page truck to feud with? The Rock could have one too. It'd be called The Rock. It's just a rock with wheels attached to it. It's like the wacky races. Of course, some of the wrestling personalities were more welcome than others. Bill Goldberg had a giant picture of his face plastered on the roof of his truck driven by Tom Mentz, and he attended the World Finals the year his truck won the racing competition. The wrestler Medusa owned and drove her own truck. She still does 18 years later, and she's badass. She's won both the racing and freestyle championships in her career. But then you had the New World Order truck. While the WCW Nitro Truck, Sting, Goldberg, and Medusa didn't really have a gimmick or any other kind of fakey element to them, NWO had this really weird thing where the driver's identity was unknown. They would put up a blank picture, they wouldn't release his name, and he would duck out of the way of cameras looking for post-race interviews. Instead, they trotted out a spokesperson, in this case played by former NFL tight end and professional wrestler Chad Fortune. He would give arrogant interviews, protect his anonymous driver from the cameras, and verbally accost Dan Moriarty. The guy gets done, he's winning! Dan. It was... really friggin' weird. The strange thing was that NWO was actually a really successful truck. The driver was later revealed to be Rob Nell, cousin to Tom Mentz and former driver of the truck Bulldozer. But the Monster Jam world couldn't stand the gimmick. Wrestling was getting big ratings and big money, but Vince McMahon just kept trying to creep into the legitimate sporting world, like racing or football. This is the XFL! 
The NWO truck was something. I have to look at it again. Maybe it's not as weird as I thought. What is going on here, Scott? Well, this guy, and you see him go with a bat, by the way, competition director. Is that a baseball bat? Like where it needs to be. Why is he doing the 90s haka? But he's not happy here. You gotta be kidding me! Why is he beating the crap out of a tire? What is going on? What do you want? I gotta know. <laughs> okay, well, most people have that reaction when Dan Moriarty approaches them. Come on, let's try and catch a word with Rob. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Did they just say his name? Rob, what happened, man? Goldberg? No, 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 no. Hey, what's up with that, man? Oh my god, they did! They just said the name of the mystery driver! What's the point of even trying to hide it, then? I mean, look, Tom Metz is even in the background! They're not even trying! Okay, well, maybe the whole spokesperson gag was well woven in. Alright, it's a long shot, but maybe it was clever and well delivered and- We have been cheated. Somebody has been messing around with our equipment! We never go out in the first round. Or he'll rant and rave like Donald Trump on cocaine. Listen to this, he can't even get the name of the circuit right. The NWO will completely dominate Monster Madness. Right. Our equipment is the best in the, in, in the Monster Jam. Monster Jam. Monster Jam. It's two words, three syllables. It's your employer. How do you even get that wrong? Okay, well, this is an interview from an event where NWO lost in the first round. It was a rarity. He was a good driver. But this is... You never go in the first round. Do you have something to do with this? Uh, no, I have a microphone. You have something to do with this? I would, this I we would... have been cheated. McCarthy levels of paranoia. I don't have time to talk to you. I need an official now. Go get me an official. I need to get an official. Now, okay, they didn't actually get an official. They... can't help it if you guys aren't performing to our standards. Now just go ahead and go behind the truck. What? Why? That's not even the first time they've accused someone of cheating. When they lost in the final race of an event to Goldberg, they blamed it on some fake false start. I think that Goldberg jumped the gun, he cheated, that's how he won. He's got, he's got that flag back, I can't do anything about that. I've been trying to find a commissioner. Goldberg's response to a rematch? I choose not to run. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm at the beach, get no respect. California. You're getting no respect because you're on the beach with socks and shoes, you shooby. Give me a give me an NWO for life. Okay, how'd I do that? Just slow day at the beach, huh guys? Couldn't find any other people, so you had to go with Professor Frank? NWO, come on! Come on, man. I told you, I talked to you. Out tonight. How about that thing we practice on there, huh? I didn't practice nothing with you. I'm a great digger boy all the way. Who is this kid? He should be a spokesperson. Finally, we have a rival! Oh my god, he won them over! This kid is better at his job than Fortune is! Three bigger gimmick. Come on, give me the NWO. It's gonna be wild! Oh my god, stop! Take it away! For what it's worth, Fortune did his job and towed the company line. Uh, he's a wrestler, it's what he does. Rob Nell was not blessed with the same acting chops. This might be the funniest interview ever given in any sport ever. They tired me to drive, they want me to win, I need more equipment, I need more dollars. Mo money, mo problems, Rob. I need it. I go out, I kill, I kill. I killed, Jerry. I killed. Do a 28. I get beat by two lousy points. What's the deal? What's the deal with points? What's the point of points if you don't point when you appoint points? Boy, the Seinfeld reference is really built in, huh? What are you doing? We gotta get 30s, we can't settle for 28. <laughs> Four and one. And that is not all right. That ain't all right. Let me tell you something. You know the deal. You drive. I talk. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. You talk all you want. I've had it in crap. See what you do. Jesus. Chad is taking the alcoholic father blaming the child for their parents' divorce tactic. He's not even a good spokesperson. Sean Spicer had more charm than this guy. Oh, he's paid to win, so you get out of here, all right? All you people stay out of here. Now it's time for my favorite game. Chad Fortune grabs the mic and says, talk to me. Let, let me tell you something. I'm going to do a show. Hey, hey, hey. I told you what? You're a little saw it. I saw it. Ow. Let me tell you something. What the heck of a run? Let me tell you something. Long show, baby. And that we are here. And I'll tell you what. Hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. I told you. Now with our equipment. We, we have been cheated! We never go out of this! Our equipment is forever! We're gonna demand these respect from you! These people here! Freestyle now! You leave him alone! 
Let me tell you something. Yeah. Now you need something that's been said. You talk to me. Huh? You talk to me. You talk to me. That's why you deal with me. Do you do with the rest of your night? I don't have time to talk to you. Man. You talk to me. My driver's driving. Listen, my driver drives oh, to win. You talk to me. Hey, hey, hey. Man, what is the deal with you? After a year's run, the NWO truck was taken off the circuit, and Rob Nell went back to driving his old truck business as usual. His stint as the mystery driver was never really addressed again. It remains one of the strangest footnotes in Monster Jam history. But remember that spokesperson guy? Chad Fortune, yeah, him. Well, see, a little bit about the actual subject of today's story, Carl Malone, he fancied himself a wrestling fan in the late 90s. He even had a tag team matchup one year with Diamond Dallas Page against Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman. There's a collection of names I bet you thought would never fit in the same sentence altogether. After the NWO truck was scrapped, Fortune wanted to get behind the wheel of his own truck, and was subsequently handed the keys to the WCW Nitro Machine. Somehow, I guess through that bash at the beach, Fortune and Malone become friends, and he even takes him for a ride in the Nitro Machine. Malone says he got to drive for a bit, and that his wife got to drive Gravedigger, since Dennis Anderson was Chad Fortune's mentor. Good for his wife. Not bitter. Nope. No, sir. Not at all. Okay, brief story time here. When I was a kid, my family and I would vacation down to North Carolina, and one of the stops we'd make would be at Kill Devil Hills, home of Dennis Anderson and Digger's Dungeon. They used to offer rides in the back of Gravedigger. You would go around the facility, go over some bunny hills. It was awesome. Well, see, I was too small to go at the time, but my brother got to ride in the back. I was so jealous. Well, before I ever got the chance to go on, the truck rolls over one year, and they stopped doing it. Now, they've brought it back, but we haven't been to North Carolina in a while, so I still haven't ridden in Gravedigger. Once. I just want to go for a ride in Gravedigger. Once. Please! Malone was hooked, so in 2001, he announced that he would be dropping $500,000 on his own monster truck. He was set to make over $15 million in salary that year, so this was pocket change to him. He tapped Chad Fortune to be his driver, but insisted that he would drive it from time to time in freestyle events. My contract says I can't shoot a gun from the back of a horse, he said. Guess that means I can drive a truck. I don't believe that Malone ever formally drove at an event. I've scoured the internet looking for proof, but it looks like all he ever did was pose in front of the truck. He left the driving to Fortune, which, thank God. Now, looking back, Malone is an NRA board member. Even though he has spoken out against gun violence before, having to stipulate that he can't play with guns while under contract with the Jazz, it seems wise. It's advice Plexico Burris never got. It's the added layer of from the back of a horse that gets me. If it was another animal, would it be okay? Like, what if it was a zebra or a donkey? I get it's hard to look badass when you're on the back of a donkey, but if it's Carl Malone wielding a shotgun on the back of a donkey, then... Yeah, it would still look ridiculous. What was my point again? The Power Forward truck went through a couple of different concepts. It was originally going to be called the Mailman, which would have been a cool tribute to Malone's iconic nickname. The truck initially debuted as Rage and Steel, which I guess was just a placeholder until they settled on a name. Fun fact, Rage and Steel debuted during Monster Jam World Finals 2. Blacksmith had broken down and was unable to run, so they gave driver Pablo Huffaker Rage and Steel. He puttered around for a little while, then said, screw it, and rammed his wheels up on top of the Sting truck they didn't bother to clear out of the corner. Guess that's one way to pin Sting. Once they got around to debuting Power Forward, it took a while for the design to come into its own. It ran its first race as a plain white pickup truck with lettering on the side, but come 2002, they gave it a proper paint job. The truck was given a black base with purple and light blue accenting, somewhat matching the Utah Jazz designs. The wheels have basketballs in the middle, which is a nice touch. But that's not the best part. Nope, because on the side of the truck is Carl Malone on the back of a donkey wielding a shotgun. No, no, I'm kidding, but it's equally as silly. It's a shirtless, flaming Carl Malone going in for what is probably going to be the world's most ruthless dunk. Okay, second most ruthless. Still not over that, baby! Power Forward looked good, for sure, but Fortune himself was having problems. He was a rising star in the world of Monster Jam. He was a go-for-broke freestyler, which made him a fan favorite. But his reckless abandon got him in a lot of trouble on the track. He was a raw driver. We had a running joke in our house that the truck shouldn't be called Power Forward, but rather Power Upside Down, 
because the truck would keep rolling over. <laughs> we were a clever family. By this point, the WCW's deal with Monster Jam has run out. Medusa still drives her own truck, but all the others, Sting, Goldberg, they all left. Tom Mentz replaced Goldberg's mean mug with his own dorky face on the truck, which is pretty funny. See, there I am, Team Mentz. He was nice. And sweaty. Chad Fortune does well enough to earn an invite to the World Finals in Power Forward's first year. He takes Power Forward to Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. He has to run a qualifying race to determine seeding in the head-to-head -head competition. He takes a lap and crashes. Power upside down! Thankfully, there's no damage to the truck, and Power Forward is able to race. His first round matchup is against a truck called Bulldozer, driven by Guy Wood. They come charging down the lane. They're pretty even. But then around the turn, Bulldozer starts to go up on two wheels. Chad Fortune can win his first ever World Finals race. All he has to do is make the J-turn. Let's make that turn! Bulldozer on two wheels! And he's over in Chad Fortune! <laughs> Chad! Chad! Come on, Chad! Chad Fortune runs two races and crashes two times. He comes out later for the freestyle competition and crashes. It's a horrible debut in the world final. But hey, kudos for making it. And the truck looks good. When it's in one piece, that is. The next year, he makes the finals again. He still loses in his first and only race, but this time he finishes top five in freestyle. The next year, Chad Fortune leaves the power forward truck in the hands of Carl Van Horn. The truck gets a new coat of paint to match Malone's move to the Los Angeles Lakers, and best of all, Van Horn keeps the tradition alive of losing in the first race and crashing prematurely in the freestyle competition. And that is not what he was supposed to do. Power Forward goes for one last tour of service in 2005. Frank Kermel drives the truck and makes the world finals. He loses in the first race and crashes in the freestyle. Power upside down! Chad Fortune would move on to drive the Superman truck after his tenure in Power Forward. Like a good wrestler, he got into character by dyeing his hair black and trying to capture the whole Christopher Reeve vibe. He hasn't won any championships, but he's still driving in the Soldier Fortune truck now, and he does have a Most Improved Driver award under his belt from 2005. Honestly, I can't think of a better tribute to Karl Malone's playing career than Power Forward. Even in the world of Monster Jam, Malone is good enough to get to the finals, but can't close out a win. He finishes 0-4 in the Monster Jam World Finals Racing Tournament. I'm honestly surprised that Michael Jordan doesn't sponsor Tom Mensa's truck just to stick it to Malone one more time. So never mind the basketball dominance, never mind the fraternity suit, never mind the fact that a team called the Jazz plays in one of the least black states in the country. No. If there's one takeaway that you should have about Carl Malone, it's the legend of the power forward machine. Power upside down forever, baby! Woo!